we did his funeral here in Brooksville and a lot of WWE staff, wrestlers, uh, wrestlers from AEW showed up. I mean, it was sadly a beautiful funeral to, to celebrate Wyndham. We're talking about um, Wyndham. WWE has um, produced a, uh, a documentary that all about his wonderful life. Um, right. How did how did this come to be, and what was your your hand in this as well? Well, basically, I I called Triple H when Wyndham passed away because I didn't want all kinds of internet crap going out about him and stuff. So. Triple H uh, took the reins and and you know let everybody know that Wyndham had unexpectedly passed and and then later you know Triple H called and said we we would like to keep do a documentary so his kids know him you know when they get older because he yeah. he does have four four we have Frank four grandkids through him and so he said I I would like to keep that alive and do something you know that's gonna the kids can look back 20 years from now and uh and see who their dad was what a star he was so that's how that originated and wwe's been awesome they you know just have been very helpful throughout the process you know and with Wyndham passing and and very generous and and, and I can't say enough about that. Yeah. Uh, along with, you know, the, the rock. I mean, he was sending food here every other day and people reaching out and, and undertaker and, you know, just so many people. We, it, we did his funeral here in Brooksville and a lot of WWE staff wrestlers, uh, wrestlers from AEW showed up. I mean, it was, sadly a beautiful funeral to to celebrate Wyndham yeah to celebrate his terrific life which one of his characters did you embrace the most was it Bray Wyatt myself yes Bray Wyatt I thought that was just I thought they could have got a, a ton more mileage out of that because that was something very just different and you know not that i didn't like the fiend because he would he kind of thought that up in his mind which was totally different also but i enjoyed and those were the days i was producing so i got to see how fans reacted to all the bray wyatt stuff and not that i was on his shows every night because we back then we would as a producer you would do smackdown and some Next week, he would do raw live events so and TVs, both of the TVs. So I would think I myself personally, that Bray Wyatt was the coolest, you know, and something that stuck out to me that was the coolest thing that WWE had for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Did I have to ask you this because of the Funhouse thing there? Was he a big fan of the uh, Pee Wee Herman Yes. Um, yes. Oh, Pee Wee I, Her I, yeah. Pee Wee Herman. Um, he was a big fan of Beetlejuice movies. Uh, yeah. You know, just uh, he liked different stuff and he would memorize stuff as a young child. You know, he would he knew all the words to Beetlejuice and and he just that animation with that the characters just kind of stuck out in a, in his mind, you know, and he re recreated a lot of that stuff on his own terms at, at a certain point in his life. But he was, he was uh, a, a kind of a horror fan of horror movies. Yes, I know that. You know? And he just, and my wife is too. I myself don't like horror movies. She's a huge Stephen King fan. So, those our kids would you know get read Stephen King books <laughs> at night. I know? used to and, I used to I used I would run when I was a kid 
to the movies to be scared of uh, Bela Lugosi and uh, right. or Arlov. And to me, those were the horror movies. One thing that the discussions that I had with uh, Wyndham was about, and I used to nag him about this, was Robert De Niro. He was a huge De Niro fan. And yeah. I kept begging him to see King of Comedy, the De Niro, Jerry Lewis movie, which was one of my, because I was a big Jerry Lewis fan and a big right. De Niro. So he finally called well, me one day that he saw it. Yeah. Well, yeah. the thing of it is, too, is like, you know, that was a, a, a totally creepy movie, like the the character. And, and I know Wyndham collaborated with Danny Spivey a little bit about that, like the Waylon Mercy gimmick. Yes. And Wyndham, you know, that, that was, I mean, that De Niro movie was totally, Cape Fear was like off the hook, you know. Oh, that was one of the best. That was one yeah. of the best he ever did. So let's move back to, by the way, your days as IRS um, and, you know, with Ted DiBiase, et cetera. What, was that the favorite part of your career? Because I remember, you know, I was that pure wrestling fan back then. And when those gimmicks started coming out, I was like, wow. And I loved that character. Was that your favorite character or was Mike Rotunda? Well, I don't, I don't know. Wrestler? I don't know if it was my favorite character. It was probably my most successful character because it was like a five, six year run with the biggest wrestling company in the world at the time, WWF. So, you know, it was successful in my mind, but I also enjoyed the varsity club. We could have right. done a bunch of other stuff with that too. And I, I just had periods of my life. Sorry. Like mm -hmm. with, when Barry and I tagged up, we were in Florida. Dusty Rhodes tagged us up when I first left uh, Charlotte and I was there for like a year and a half. And I started over in Germany. So I spent four months, Dick Byer took me over there, started in Germany came back to the States and I worked a show in Toronto and Johnny Weaver from Charlotte was in the office down there and he called me and said, Hey kid, you want to come to, to Charlotte? And I, and I said to Dick Byer, I said, what do I do? And he goes, go to Charlotte. Cause now you're in the States. And that was like a training ground. Unbelievable. You Jim know, Crockett was, promotions. right. Crockett promotions, NWA, um, Wahoo McDaniel had just taken over the, the booking job. Um, they're just the stars that he brought in, the Briscoe brothers, Steamboat Youngblood, Jake Roberts. I lived with Jake for like six months when I oh first moved goodness. there. Yeah, oh <laughs> that was a crazy I love, snakes I love getting it. out. Snakes getting out in the in their little apartment thing. And let me tell you what's gonna happen. Right. Yeah. Morocco oh, was there, slaughter. Mm -hmm. Uh, Florida, Piper, Jay Youngblood, yeah, I remember. We Orton, were a great Orton Jr., I mean, the, the cast was, they're all Hall of Famers. Tremendous. And that was, I, I'm like like uh, six months into the wrestling business, and I'm around all these guys. If you can't learn from them, you're not going to learn. And you that was... You a, go back home. You go yeah, back that home. was a head start for me. And then um, – Crockett got a call from Dusty and down in Florida, he was the booker down there and said, we need a young baby face, send somebody down. And they sent me and right away, Dusty tagged Barry Wyndham and I up. So for about a year, a little over a year, every night we were working 25, 30 minute mat tag matches every night, seven days a week. So we just boom, boom, boom. We're like clockwork. Then when WWE started, we ended up going there and we, you know, they made us champions within, I don't know, like a month of when we got there. Cause we you were really young. caught fire. You really caught yeah. fire there. Cause so, I remember and, and it was, it was the perfect storm because they, we were USA guys coming out to born in the USA and, and, you know, young U S baby faces and, they pitted us against Sheik and Volkov and we just took off. And yeah, yeah. it was, it was amazing. You know, I mean, it, you went from working 
to in front of 3,000 people to 10,000 people every night, you know, just sold out arenas everywhere you went. And it led to the first WrestleMania, which was, you know, very cool. So, oh, that, that it, changed. Only, it, it, changed only grew, really? it only grew from there. Yeah. So, did, but the first WrestleMania, um, did you, that was the gamble that, you know, had that not worked, this all may not sure. have happened. What was what did it feel? Did you believe that this was going to change the business like it did? Well, you didn't know at the time. It was like another day, and you go and you get fired up and you go do your business, you know. But it did. It it definitely changed the landscape of the wrestling business forever, and it's still going forty years later. So yeah, that that's you just get pumped up. We didn't know where it would end up but you knew you were part of something special. Yeah, so now 40 years later, you and Barry Windham, the U.S. Express, are getting inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Tell me how you got the call, and were you surprised? I was surprised because of my son, you know, with Windham passing, I thought they were going to immediately put Windham into the Hall of Fame, which he will be at some point. But I think that WWE reassessed stuff and thought it was too soon to go there with our family, you know, and the, and the reactions and the and the stress on us. And we got a call uh, from WWE and said, you know, Hunter wants to do a Zoom call. And we were thinking they were going to tell us what, you know, was going to happen at, at WrestleMania. And Hunter said, you guys are going to get inducted you and Barry and you were part of the first show ever WrestleMania. And it was like, it was kind of, you know, very flattering, obviously. Uh, and actually less stressful on us because of all the stuff we've had to go through with Wyndham passing, just the mental capacity of it. So, you know, and, and it, obviously it's a great honor because you're getting rewarded for, what you spent, you know, 40 years doing. So, yeah. yeah. The, the fans were absolutely crazy about you. Let me go over some of the um, other um, inductees before I let you go. Um, Paul Heyman, Paulie right. Dangerously. I mean, he uh, set the bar for ECW and so much other stuff. What would you like to say about Paul Heyman going into the WWE? No, I, I've always gotten along with Paul. I actually worked a couple shows for him when, you know, when, when I was in between territories in Philly, the old ECW arena. And, yeah, I mean, he he stuck with it. He had a different idea about the business and and did a lot of – they did a lot of crazy stuff there. Actually, I took um, my my younger son Taylor Bo uh, on the road with me one time. I got booked in Philly, and that was I, I had taken Wyndham on a road trip before when he was younger, and then Taylor got to do it, and that was the place that Taylor got to do it. And he he got to eat his first uh, Philly cheesesteak sandwich, and he was like he's been hooked since. So you know, and it, it, it's like. You cross paths with a lot of people in this business, you know, and I've always tried to get along with everybody and that, and that, you know, just uh, treat people like you want to be treated. So, yeah. 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 Now, also in the first WrestleMania, there's another person who's getting inducted 40 years later and unfortunately is not here with us anymore. And that's the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali. Tell us about, uh, Muhammad Ali. Yeah, I I thought Muhammad Ali was the first inductee because we did, I remember we did a thing and maybe he just spoke at it. It was like the first, it was the first Hall of Fame and I, you know, this is 40 years later and it was at a hotel like you would have a reception and a, a wedding for and maybe Muhammad Ali just spoke, you know, he, he is an all time legend, you know, but he, he, nobody can dispute that. So that, that's pretty awesome to be on the same card. Now there's one, there's one guy who's going into the hall of fame who never 
worked in WWE, and that's T-Bolt Patterson. And this, to me, comes from Triple H being the consummate wrestling fan, where he's bringing people from other territories that may have not. Right. Did, did you know or work with uh, T-Bolt at all? No. Do you know how old he is? I mean. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't. He's got to be between know. your age and my age, probably. Yeah, um, I don't know, unfortunately. Well, you used and, to see and him I in didn't, the To be honest with you, I didn't grow up a, a pro wrestling fan, you know? I The part of New York that I grew up in, they had the old WWF show was yeah. on like at 11, 12 o'clock at night on a Friday night, so I didn't grow up watching it. When I met Dick Byer... Uh, through Syracuse University where I played football and wrestled. He spoke at our wrestling banquet and he goes, Hey kid, you interested in getting a pro wrestling? I said, well, I don't really know anything about it. I said, can you make money? And he goes, I do. All right, kid. So he's the one who took me to Germany. And that was the first time he took me to Canada with him. Cause he was still working. He had just returned from Japan, like a seven year run. And he was like a superstar over there. Yes, and he, he took was. me to Canada, and that was the first time I'd ever seen pro wrestling in my life, especially wow. live, because he told me to start wow. watching the TV. And I remember I met Andre Giant, Andre the Giant in the dressing room, uh, Gino Brito, Frank Valwa, um, Gino, uh, uh, shoot, I can't remember uh, some of the other guys, but... Um, the Rougeau brothers, they were young. Yeah. They were working there. And yeah. Dino Bravo was the other guy. Right, Dino Bravo, sure. And those, sure. those, that was the first time I'd ever seen. And I sat, like, in the second row from the ring, and I'm like, whoa, this is pretty cool. I can do this. <laughs> so, real life, real life yeah. uh, animation. Now, Dick Byer, for you fans that don't know, is the original Destroyer. And yeah, quite yeah. a legend. Uh, what about Bull Nakano? Uh, did you cross paths with her at all? I think when I was working, Bull was working in WWF, you know, WWF back in those days. But yeah, I think I'm pretty sure I know who she is. Okay. So um, what would you like to say to the, uh, before I let you go now for the second time I said that, but what would you like to say to all the fans uh and you mentioned your early days in Florida. I was there so often. I was down there like once a month. My parents lived in West Palm. And they always used to say that you always said, say hello to Bill, to my dad. Um, right. uh, but what would you like to say to the fans for their support or their jeering throughout the years? No, I mean, it, it's very simple. With Without the fans, there's no us, period. Yeah. Yeah. Because... If there aren't fans, nobody's going to give a crap about us. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. And one, uh, you, we talked so much about Wyndham and you were talking about uh, the documentary. And I understand that The Undertaker uh, was a large part of that doing commentary. Yes. On, have yes. you seen the product? I have. You have. And were you very over the moon about it? It's very sad, but it's it's so well done. Yeah. What do you it, What do you think people will take away from it after they watch it? What that when them with star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loved yeah. by millions. Yeah. He was wonderful to the fans, to everyone in the business, and he and I became friends as well. So uh, yeah. I miss. He he wasn't hard to like if you knew. No, not at all. At one of the uh, another one of the conventions, uh, he was doing photo ops, and when he saw me on the side, just waiting to say hello, he stopped the photo ops and he just came over and gave me a hug. So I have That's a photo. Been, of, I have a photo of that. Send you. Much love to you and the family, and thank you so much for doing this. All right. All right yeah. And uh, I'll see you on the road, hopefully WrestleMania weekend for that grand, that grand slam that you and Barry Windham deserve so much. Bill After with the 
Mike Rotundo, do you have any financial advice, by the way, uh, for, I, oh, that's right, April 15th is coming up soon, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. What, what well, do you, what do you, with, with you the current government, you, with the current government, you better pay your taxes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you at the matches.